Hey guys, welcome back. Um, if you are just clicking on this video and you haven't seen part one, go ahead and click on part one first so you know the whole story of this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link in the description box and I should have the video posted somewhere on the screen, but I think you should just go ahead and go to the description box. That just seems like the most logical thing. So watch part one first and then go ahead and watch this part. So anyways, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just jump right in. As I said before, I want to wear my witch's hat because I love dressing up. I find any excuse to dress up, but I feel like it's almost disrespectful to do that in this video because we are talking about death. I also wanted to say that um, I want to do more paranormal videos, but sometimes real life stories of murderers to me are a whole lot scarier than anything paranormal. So let's go ahead and jump right back in, you guys. So I left off on, in my last video saying that the police went ahead and they tried to warn all the prostitutes of what was happening but they didn't really want to listen you know they didn't trust the police they thought that it was more of like an entrapment situation but they did try to at least um make relationships with a few of the prostitutes so police at this point eventually did go ahead and make a public publication in the local newspaper and um, after a tip led them to Wisconsin um, on a truck driver that they thought was the killer. They thought that this truck driver fit the description perfectly. They were like, oh, okay, you know, um, these girls were missing or came from other locations. They weren't just born and raised here. And a truck driver has the perfect opportunity to be able to come into town, do what he's going to do, and then, and then just take off. So that's what they were thinking was happening. And they made that publication and they left the next day to go to Wisconsin because, to see the um, guy in question. And they were called back midway because they found another body. Now I feel like William Suff did that on purpose because he wanted to be like, no, 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 no. I am in charge of this game. How dare you think it's somebody else? Because again, I think he wants the attention. I think he wants to be known for something, right? And so he was like, how dare you like accuse someone else? Clearly I'm the killer. So you think it, that he's over there in Wisconsin? Well, let me just go ahead and kill this person and I'm gonna show you right now that you're wrong and it's me. But obviously he doesn't wanna get caught, but he's still getting ballsy, right? On January 19th, 1991, Kathleen Leslie, mine 42 was found by a passing motorist northwest of lake elsinore less than a mile from where angie's body was found she was beaten and strangled and she had flesh abrasions on her right thigh caused by him pulling down her underwear too quickly and so it more or less gave her like rug burns on her thighs if that makes sense in 1991 Suff's three-month-old baby, again, into a Kaiser Permanente location with severe brain damage, a broken leg, and three broken ribs. Um, the baby was then taken from the couple and was placed with a family outside of the location. How could you beat two babies? How could you? I... Wow. On April 27th, 1991, Sherry Michelle Paisner, 24, yes, she was a prostitute. She was also a cleaning lady and um, she attended the California School for the Deaf. A homeless man was looking for cans and found her naked, lifeless body at, at the rear of the Concourse Bowling Center on Arlington Avenue in Riverside. She had been strangled and a she had been strangled and um, the handle of a plunger was inserted in her and she was left like that kind of spread eagle, if that makes any sense. On July 4th, 1991, a decomposing body was found in a patch of grass in Lake Elsinore. 
She was strangled. Decomposition made it difficult to identify her other injuries. She was found to be Sherry Ann Latham, age 37. On August 16, 1991, in an alley in an industrial area of Corona, the body was posed seductively and she was face down and strangled. Police at this point were confident that they could say that the killer liked white girls and that the killer was based out of Riverside and he wasn't interested in killing any other girls besides white girls. And so they went ahead, are my kids up? Son of a bitch. They went ahead and put that in the paper. They made it public that he likes white girls. So, Suff being the guy that Suff is, wanting to be the one that, you know, controls the game, so to say, killed again. So on September 13th, 1991, Catherine McDonald, age 30, was found off a dirt road near Barron Construction Site in Tiscany Hills, in the Tiscany Hills section of Lake Elsinore, and she was found by a building contractor. She was William Suff's only melanated African-American, whatever you want to say, she was the on his only victim. And that poor woman only died because he wanted to prove to the police that they didn't know who he was. Poor girl. Her throat was slit. She was stabbed in her heart three times. She was strangled. Her right breast was cut off and she had four cuts and one stab wound inside of her nether regions. So he had kind of shoved the knife up her. But with her death, there came some evidence. The police noticed that the tire tracks that backed up into that field had four different tires. All four of his tires were different. And I mean, how many vans do you know that have four different tires? So that was a huge thing for them. On October 30th, <clears throat> 1991, 35 year old Delilah Zamora was spotted by a passing motorist in a patch of matted undergrowth on the north shoulder of Healy, trafficked, trafficked intersection in Mira Loma, northwest of Riverside. She was strangled with extreme force. On December 23rd, 1991, two days before Christmas, 39 year old Eleanor Odeja was found in an orange grove near the intersection of Jefferson Street and Victoria Avenue, half a mile from Riverside Police Department. On January 9th, 1992, William Self was stopped by the police for making an illegal U-turn on University Avenue. So he was probably in the process of trying to pick up another hooker and he got caught just for the um, illegal U-turn. When he was stopped, he was calm he spoke softly. He was arrested and brought in to be questioned, even though he didn't know why. And he was calm until he was asked, you were in the orange groves. And his hat, his attitude completely changed. And he said, I was out there picking oranges. I found the body and I pulled the knife out of her. And then he spontaneously said, and I didn't cut off her breasts. Then a search of his van um, and his home showed the damning evidence pretty much. Like it was just chuck full of evidence. So the van had four different tires that matched the tracks found in the orange grove. He had carpet fibers in his van that matched all of the bodies. There was thread from the sleeping bag that he murdered them in um, that matched the thread that was found in the bodies. Um, and everybody around him was shocked. Everybody who knew him and worked with him was shocked. Everybody who like knew him in the apartment complex that he was living in was shocked. You know, everybody said stuff was a stand up guy. He that won the chili cook off. He was head of the rideshare program. He actually used the van that he murdered these girls in. It's actually on the poster of the rideshare program. 
he did security at his apartment even though like he wasn't a security guy and he was even an activist about trying to clean up the streets from prostitutes he was always like the prostitutes are ruining this and the prostitutes are nasty and we gotta clean this up we gotta rid ourselves of these nasty prostitutes but little do they know you know he was over there raping them and then killing them on july 28th 1992 the grand jury indicted him on um, 14 murder counts and one attempted murder count now they weren't able to get him on all of the um all of the women only because there just wasn't enough evidence but um you know they were still able to get him on some so on july 19th 1995 riverside county jury found self guilty and on august 17th 1995 after deliberating for only 10 minutes the jury return their verdict of death which kind of I mean what do you expect right so on October 26th 1995 trial court started and it followed the jury's recommendations and ordered him to be um, condemned to death right now he's currently being housed at San Quentin State Penitentiary um, he's an excellent inmate with no disciplinary disciplinary actions at all and um they don't trust him for it obviously but um he's a good he's a good um he's a good inmate i guess he has the most privileges out of all of the death row inmates but all employees are fully aware that he is extremely self-involved and egotistical and he'll never admit to guilt so that's pretty much where he's at he's on death row he's waiting on death row Personally, I don't see him actually getting the death penalty. I think he's just going to die in there, which I guess technically is still the death penalty. But I don't think he's going to actually be put to death only because this happened in 95. We're in 2000 and almost 19. I just, California and the death penalty doesn't really, it takes a while for things to go. So I have a feeling he's just going to kind of rot in prison, which um, for everything that he's done, sorry, I don't really feel bad. Let him rot. So, uh, anyways, that is one of the scariest stories I think I have ever researched for, um, like a Southern California murder type dealio. So, if you guys liked this video, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!